Hello, um, I, my name is Larissa Kaiser, and I'm an Icelandic literary translator based in Brooklyn, New York. And I'm here with Steinan Helgutothir, who's in Reykjavik. And Stanen is a visual artist, poet, and author of three novels, uh, most recently Sterkast the Kona Heimi, which is the strongest woman in the world. And uh, Stanen, today, would you uh, tell us a little bit about the book? Yes. Um, the protagonists in the book are siblings. Uh, they are raised under quite difficult uh, circumstances. Uh, the brother grows up to become a reluctant leader of a disparate group of rebel activists, while the sister, Gunnhildur, which is a very strong Icelandic name, <laughs> becomes uh, a popular mortuary beautician. Uh, Gunnhildur has uh, several uh, powers that she doesn't flaunt much. Uh, she's the strongest woman in the world but she can also talk to the dead. Uh, in, the, in the chapter that we are going to read, uh, The Tower, uh, Gunnhildur's customer is a priest of a very special small cult. And he makes a very strange uh, request of her. This is one of my favorite chapters in this book, and I love this book. I was so excited to read it. Um, I was, um, you liked it. Mm. I, was very, I, I very much hope that it's something that everybody can read in full soon um, in English. Uh, but for now, uh, yeah. we're going to swap back and forth. We're going to try something new. We're going to read a little in Icelandic and then a little in English, and we're going to go through the excerpt like that. Um, okay. Would you like to start for us, Dana? Yeah. Nú er hann kominn til mín í svartri flúraðri kistu í ofurstærð. Mjóslegin búkurinn er ekki starrinn á barni og hann er sveipaður í dumbreða skikkju. Á höfðinu, sem verðist alltaf stórt, er skrítin gilt húfa og hendurnar eru kreftar yfir kross yfir brjóstinu. Þú ert aldeilis vel til hafður, get ég ekki stilt með um að segja. Ég er eins og ég á að vera, sem er meira en maður getur sagt um þig, segir hann strangur. Hvað áttu við, spyr ég. Ég er bara í hvíta vinnuslokknum mínum. Einmitt say it home. Tower. Today's client has arrived in an ornate, jumbo-sized black casket. His slender trunk is no bigger than a child's, and he's draped in a maroon cloak. On his head, which seems far too big for his body, there's a strange gilded cap, and his hands are clenched around a cross on his breast. Aren't you in fine feather? I can't help myself from saying. I am as I should be, which is more than I can say for you, he says severely. What do you mean? I ask. I'm just wearing my white lab coat. Precisely, he says. This is going to be one tough customer, I think. What can I do for you? Did you have anything particular in mind? I ask. Yes, I want you to make a quick, tri quick trip to Hapnir to talk to my daughter. She's received instructions and knows what needs to be done. Which Hapnir do you mean? I can call her if you want. No, you have to go in person. She never talks on the phone. And surely you must have heard of Hapnir, the village in Reykjanes? Sure. Is she deaf? No, but she's a good, well-brought-up girl who doesn't let the world impinge upon her. I'm silent. What is the matter with menfolk these days? As if the endless squabbling at home isn't enough. My patience is wearing thin, and I want to shake this pushy old corpse. Calm down, he says. I'm prepared to pay you double if you make the trip to talk to my daughter, but hold off on taking care of this until tomorrow. It would actually be nice to get away, take a drive, but he's going to pay top dollar for it, even though I suspect he's a penny pincher. And I wasn't brought up one way or the other. Octuple, I say. Quadruple, he says. Sextuple, I say. And he agrees, knowing full well he isn't in a good position to negotiate. Þegar ég kem á áfangastað, kem ég strax auga húsið, því upp úr öðrum gaflinum rýst turn sem grípur aðtillina. Úr honum hangi klukka og ég sé ekki betur en hún sé eins og þessar sem eru víða í sveitakirkjum landsins. Við útihurðina er hins vegar dýrabjalla, bara stór, uh, engin dýrabjalla fyrir geðu, bara stór dýrahamar sem er eins og hrútshaus. When I get to my destination, I see the house immediately because of the eye-catching tower that projects from one of the gables. 
there's a bell hanging in it. And as best I, as I can tell, it's just like the ones in country churches all over Iceland. There's no doorbell, however, just a large knocker shaped like a ram's head. It clings loudly when I drop the hammer and I hear muted footsteps approaching before the door opens. Komdu inn, segir konan áður en ég get heilsað. Hún er grönn, narrist, dögt sýkt hárið er grásprengt og ég eltana inn í tómlega stofu. Það er óskaplega heilt að henni, enda lofar í stórum og sérkennlegum arni sem fyllir eitt hornið. Á arinn hillunni er fornfálegt silvurtrompet. Come in, says the woman before I can greet her. She's thin and straight-backed. Her, her long dark hair is shot through with gray, and I follow her into an empty sitting room. It's exceedingly warm, as there's a fire crackling in a large, peculiar fireplace that fills one whole corner. An antiquated silver trumpet sits on the mantel. Did father send you, she asks simply, and I nod. I promise to do this according to his wishes. It's important when a man in his position dies, she says. What position is that, I ask? He was the priest of the congregation of the Old Testament. I've never heard of that congregation. Is it big? There were 12 of us. Now there's only me left, says the woman. Where are the others, I ask, like a fool. They're dead. The woman gestures for me to sit at a small table. This is becoming a bit sinister, and my imagination starts running away with me. How did they die? The woman shrugs. Well, they grew old, and they died. I was the youngest. I'm relieved. Yes, someone's always last, I say perfectly, taking out my little notebook and pen. So are you the priest of the congregation now? She's surprised. I'm a woman, she says. Women can't be priests, nor anyone else who isn't physically perfect. I try not to react and open my notebook. I understand that he wanted to be buried in a particular way. Yes, as befitting a descendant of Aaron. What Aaron is that? From the Old Testament, only descendants of Aaron may become patients, or priests, priests. Wasn't your father Icelandic? Yes, but he was a spiritual descendant of Aaron. I nod as if I've heard this many times before. Hvernig fer það fram, spyr ég. Við gerum þetta bara á hefðbundin hátt, segir nú snúðug. Þú, það er verst að þú ert búin að snerta föður minn. Ég vil ekki láta óhrengan og það væri betra að láta mig um umbúnaðinn. Aðeins skildmenni og prestar með að ganga frá þeim sem eru látnir. Ég ræski mig. Það var nú hann sem falaðist eftir tíma hjá mér og hvorki ég né snirtistofan mín erum óreyn. Hún starir á mig án þess að segja neitt og þögnin verður erfið. And so what is it we're doing? We will begin with sacrifice. The jingle of, key, of the car keys in my pocket is deeply comforting. And what do you intend to sacrifice? I say nonchalantly. A goat. By rights, it should be a ram, but some people moving out of the village had to get rid of a goat, so I got it cheap. It's tied up in the yard next to the grill. The woman points out the window where a placid goat is munching on the grass next to an old homemade grill. There's a fire going in it, and although I'm relieved to hear this thing with the goat, it's still somewhat cold comfort. How will that work, I ask. We'll do it in the traditional manner, she says haughtily. It's regrettable you've touched my father. I would not have him besmirched, and it would have been better to let me see to the preparations. Only kin and priests may tend to the dead. <sighs> I clear my throat. It was him who requested the appointment with me, and neither myself nor my parlor are unclean. She stares at me without saying anything, and the silence becomes difficult. Are there no other relatives or heirs? I ask carefully. No, father couldn't remarry after he became the high priest, not even a widow. And you? Oh, you know how it is. These days, no woman goes straight from her father's house to her husband's. The daughters of priests who become harlots are burned, and I leave behind me no descendants, only a living faith. The smell from the fireplace is becoming oppressive. Shall we get to it, I ask? She disappears into the kitchen and returns with a large machete and two Kelly green plastic pails. Then she opens the door that leads to the yard, and when she goes out, I follow. I need to get this over with. Þegar konan krýpur fyrir fram að geitina talar hún blíðlega við hana. Reyðir svo sverði til högs og ég loka augunum. Óbið er hræðilegt. Ég hef aldrei heyrt jafn hrætilegt hljóð. Þetta er eins og mannsröð. Og mér langar að hlaupa í burtu, en þegar ég opna augun spriklar geitin enn standandi og blóð bunar í annar íláti. 
Svo hnýgur hún niður og nú rennur blóðið hægar ofan í setni balan. The woman kneels before the goat, speaking gently to it, then raises the sword above her head and I close my eyes. The cry is chilling. I've never heard such a gruesome sound. It sounds human and I want to run away. When I open my eyes, the goat is writhing, still standing, its blood spurting into one of the pails. Then it collapses and the blood flows slower into the second. The woman takes a drop of blood and smears it at the very top of both of her ears and both of mine. Then she daubs another drop on her thumbs. She takes off her shoes and smears blood on the big toe of her right foot, but when she looks like she's about to do the same to me, I tell her I'm not taking off my shoes. She uses the knife to skin the goat's right thigh, from which she cuts a fatty chunk and then waggles horizontally towards the south. Then she throws it on the grill and disappears into the house. I can't imagine going back in there and sit down on a rotting tree stump while I wait. For what? I don't know. Ég hrekk við þegar ég heyri háan og hjáróma lúðrarhjóm og þegar ég lít innum stóðuglugan sé ég konuna blása í lúðurinn fyrir framan árinni. Svo þagnar lúðrarhjómurinn blessunalega þegar hún hverfi lengra inn í húsið. En þá tökum við klukknarhjómur. Ég hörfa alveg að girðingunni og sér hvar konan hangi í reipinu, róla sér næstu því. En dimmur klukknarhjómurinn berst yfir bæinn og út á sjó. I jump when I hear a deafening, dissonant fanfare, and looking through the sitting room window, I can see the woman blowing on the horn in front of the fireplace. Mercifully, the fanfare ends when she disappears further into the house, but then the bell ringing begins. I retreat all the way to the fence, and from there can see the woman hanging from the bell pole, almost swinging, and the bell's gloomy toll rings out over the village and out to the sea. How do people here react to such goings on, I think, as the woman calls to me, and I go in to where she's bringing out thin slices of grilled meat. The meal that the woman serves up is simple but good, and while we're digging in, I ask whether she mightn't have a friend, say that perhaps it isn't good to be alone in such circumstances, in sorrow. Vi ser ekki mekki, segir konan bara. Svo stendur hún upp, sópar öskunni af marmaraplötunni við altarið og dystar kjólinn. Konan finnur að ég horfi á hana og hún brosi til mín. Styrkur og virðing eru mínar flíkur. Ég hlæ að framtíðinni. We do not mourn, says the woman. Then she stands up, sweeps the ashes from the marble plate in front of the altar and brushes off her dress. The woman can feel me looking at her and she smiles at me. I clad myself in strength and respect. I laugh at the future. Thank you so much, Stephen. It was such a pleasure to be with you. <laughs> I love hearing it in, in English. I, I, I love hearing it simultaneously. I think that's so Yeah, cool. yeah. It's, you're a good reader. Have you <laughs> done some acting or something? No, I have not. I've just, uh, I've been practicing a lot of uh, reading online now. <laughs> so I will, um, I will say goodbye to you here. Yes, okay. Bye-bye. Uh, and thank you. This has been really nice. Bye-bye. At a festival together. <laughs>